Good evening, Council, members of the gallery, staff. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, regular meeting of Council to order. First up on the agenda is adoption of this evening's agenda with the recommendation that it be amended to add an item to the reading file, uh, correspondence from Tourism Valmount uh, regarding a via rail shelter and a an added uh, report to the Committee of the Whole. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, second by Councillor Mullock. Any further additions, deletions? All in favor? It's carried. Under 3.1, we need to adopt the minutes of the previous regular council meeting being uh, February 13th, 2024, and that they be uh, adopted as amended, please, to uh, include uh, the recusal um, information uh, from last meeting. Moved by Councillor Mullock, second by Councillor Pearson. Any further errors or deletions? Or omissions, I should say, not deletions. <coughs> We're not deleting minutes. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 3.2, adoption of the minutes of the previous Committee of the Whole being uh, February 8th, uh, 2024. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, second by Councillor Mullock. Any errors or omissions there? All in favor? It's carried. We do have a delegation uh, before us this evening under 4.1. Uh, Mr. Dennis Nordley, uh, resident of Valmount, uh, would like to have a bit of a discussion uh, regarding the upcoming wildfire season. Mr. Nordley, the podium is yours. Thank you for coming. I thank you kindly, Mayor and Council. Uh, anyhow, I've been doing a little bit of research running around town here trying to figure out what what the schedule is for the oncoming year. It looks like a very, very dry year for the fire, fire awareness program. And what I'm kind of curious about more than anything is, is that the, there is quite a few, well, I'd say the majority of the people in this town now are getting to be over 50. And I was just to, would like to know what the council has on their agenda to look after the majority of these people. Like, I don't know, I, you talk, I've talked to quite a few of the old people and one says there's one group and another one says there's another group. And what I would like to know is who is to get a hold of so that when you talk to people that everybody's on the same page. And so basically what I'd like for council to do is have just a little pamphlet out saying that if you meet the criteria of being an older person, these are the numbers to get a hold of. And I realize that it's a lot of work, but I, I feel that I am a concerned citizen and it, I would really appreciate it that if it was uh, just put into a bulletin from the village saying, these are the procedures if there is a wildfire, you know, so that we have some kind of plan. And it's, uh, it's very, I know that it's a big step. And if you guys do need help, I will, I will help whatever way I can possibly help. And Basically, I'm not going to dwell on a point, but that's, we just need to have a little bit better communication from the council to the town. And, and even if it's just a, a bulletin on, on the wall at the drugstore, at the store, where a majority of the people go to, it would be much appreciated. And I'm not going to dwell on a big point, but this is what I would like from the village, is just some, a little bit more cooperation so that it's a public awareness program. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Thank you very much. There you go. There's my 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Norley. Uh, motion to receive the delegation. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councilor Pearson, second by Councilor Mullock. Uh, questions, comments around the delegation? Councilor Pearson. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, great points. Thank you. Um, I think one thing that, that Dennis brings to light is uh, the fact that we could be missing people. Uh, a lot of single people uh, and senior citizens living alone in their home that may not make a list, aren't going to read a Facebook announcement, probably don't have the Voyant alert system on their phone, 
um, how do we pick up the pieces and and account for those kind of off the uh, off the radar folks in the community? Thank you, Councillor Blanchett. I think it'll also be um, a chance for um, nonprofits to get in touch with some of their people as well, like over at the seniors. You know, have you got a plan? Have you got a contact person? Who is your contact person? You know, all those kinds of things. Because things change over the years. And when you haven't had to have a major evac of your community, you don't think of stuff like that. So thank you very much for bringing that forward. And I think that uh, there's, we could do quite a bit here. Yeah, agreed. Um, and as the province rolls out the new Emergency and Disaster Management Act, uh, regulations, the legislation has been announced, but the regulations, uh, speaking of change, uh, change is coming. And so we will have to work with our emergency management, emergency management planning committee uh, uh, to probably revamp our communication strategy moving forward. Councillor Malik. Yeah, I just want to say, yeah, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Hodley. And I think that probably everybody that lives in town has been thinking along these same thoughts, you know, with the dryness, with the with wildfire, that we have been relatively unscathed over the last few years, while all the tragedy is, is occurring elsewhere in the province, and it's something that we should be very mindful of. And it's interesting in that, uh, you know, uh, mentioning about uh, community uh, societies and, and different tr uh, entities getting involved in it, um, uh, you know, I can say on, on another committee that I'm involved with that we had this very same discussion the other day about both the seniors and uh, and and uh, connecting with uh, with with uh, with folks and and you know this is definitely a uh, a reason for um, collaboration with everybody to uh, to make sure that that uh, that we don't leave any stone unturned that we don't. Uh, uh, forget anyone that's uh, that's potentially in uh, um, potentially going to be overlooked, and so yeah, thank you very much for that because, like I say, it's uppermost in in my mind, and I know a lot of people that it is as well. So hopefully, we can uh, come up with some good solutions, some good ideas. Thank you. Anything further from council? Thank you, Councillor Mullock. Uh, anything from administration? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It might be a good um, opportunity here to remind people, including seniors, that the Voyant Alert doesn't only alert people um, through email or with internet access or with a cell phone. It can um, contact people through a landline. If you have a phone with a curly cord, it will still, um, it will still reach you. We have an intention to... Um, for a push to sign up more Voyant Alert subscribers, but seniors really need to know that this isn't only for people who have new technology, it's for everyone in the community. Thank you. And I know um, while uh, it is a different service within the regional district, the regional district also has a, uh, an emergency uh, broadcast system. And uh, even if you live in the center of town, you're able to sign up for those uh, notifications. Anything further? All in favor of receipt? It's carried. Thank you again, once again, uh, Mr. Norley. Uh, we have some unfinished business. Uh, we have a guest with us uh, from uh, Image Science, uh, Carson. So at this time, I would look to council to enter into a committee of the whole uh, to discuss uh, further uh, village entrance signs proposals moved by Councillor Mullock, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Uh, and I will now call the Community of the Whole. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Uh, and we'll call the Community of the Whole to order. There are a couple recommendations before you. Uh, we have some pricing, uh, we have some designs, uh, we have a uh, design specialist with us from. Image signs, so I will open it up for discussion. Councillor Pearson. Sure, I'll jump in there. Um, uh, thank you very much for the designs and, and the pricing. Uh, I, I think these four designs work well towards our goals. Um, I know 
There was some concerns noted about the clearance height on the arch signs and by my figuring edge of lane would probably be pretty close to the the other design it looks like it would be 16 feet or better at the edge of lane on the arch sign would i be close on that carson yeah so i know i discussed this with Lori um quickly this afternoon so for the archway design um that would be the next steps if that was the design you choose to move forward with is confirming the clearance site required um, if it needed to be moved up higher on the poles or slightly larger poles to accommodate the minimum height um, that would be an option as well um, but right now these are kind of preliminary drawings to show you four different designs and then the next step would be to confirm um, clearance sites uh, required by the village thanks um do we know what the required clearance site would be going through town and would that be something that a recommendation for oversized traffic use cedar side into town i can't speak to sort of a cvsc um sort of requirement but the requirement for a telus or bc tell uh, phone line at the lowest point of the um, curve is 18 feet and so that pretty much tells you what can and cannot go through town um, because you'll be tearing down phone lines if you're any taller than that. Uh, over height loads uh, start at 13 feet 6 inches uh, and then go from there. Um, I, any, any of these heights I think from, from a transportation background would meet those requirements. Council Blanchett. Carson. Carson, I'm looking at um, the bottoms that hold up the pillars. Are they the same height as the ones we have now, where the plants go and stuff? Yes, those are the same uh, bases that hold the existing sign in place. So we would use the same bases and change the other stuff? Yes, correct. So they're still going to be the same height where we can't see they coming be, out? They will be three, yeah. Okay. But if we went with number D, you would have a little bit more vision above that for the bigger trucks and stuff, right? Yep. Okay. Any follow-ups, Councillor? No, thank you. Councillor Mullick. Well, one question that I was going to ask is, in a couple of the uh, maybe speak into your mic. So sorry, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, um, because of the uh, um, I'm I'm just looking for example on on uh, number four. Why is why why is it not a continuous curve? Why is why is that chunk kind of lifted a little bit? Is that for a structural thing or was there a reason for that? Uh, that was more just for a design option, um, as well as that that allows this, this truck to do be built in three sections uh, for transportation and installation purposes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have a favorite? <laughs> I like C. I like C. Because if the pads are still the same size, same height, me and my little car are still not going to be able to see, so I'll go around. But for appearance sake, right, when somebody drives in, the pillars are just, they look a little bit more attractive to me than number D pillars. Of course you'd go with the most expensive option. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> it's not that Mullen? much more. Uh, I actually favor, uh, favor D just because of the clean lines. Mm. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I guess, you know, I, I, coming from a background where I'm looking at maintenance, I'm just, less is better. And, you know, because of the, uh, the sight lines and, and, you know, that have been discussed, I know we can't get, get rid of the bases because they're massive, but this is a way to, uh, mitigate. to mitigate as much as uh, as much as possible, and I guess uh, also I was I was thinking the uh, the idea of having the uh, 
the, the curvature gives us a little bit more room in the uh, in the center, just in case we do have somebody that's a little tall. Because you know, with with what we've been hearing in the news about uh, the Lower Mainland and bridges, you know, I think that all of us had had a concern about uh, about heights, and because of the cost of something like this, you really don't want it to get hit by anything. On um, say uh, on D, for example. Um, would you prefer, because I, I mean, I like the color of A, but I like the design of D. But if D could have that long board plank western cedar color versus black or dark, dark, dark brown, dark brown. Any thoughts, Council, there? Council Pearson? Yeah, I would, I would uh, agree wholeheartedly. I'm... Definitely in favor of D, uh, one for the clean lines. I think the arch has more of a, a, a attractive look than just the straight uh, kind of generic uh, setup. And yeah, I agree. I, I kind of wondered about the black myself. And yeah, if we could go with a similar structure uh, or color as the first one, uh, yeah, that would be my choice as well. Any thoughts, Councilman McLean? Oh, um, I like D just the way it is. Um, like, I like D, D just the way it is. Right. And you can see around it well. Yeah. Uh, to me, the dark is more modern than the mm. old brown. Because all they would do is paint this black metal brown, right? It wouldn't be made of wood. No, no, yeah. no. It's just so it would just a be a coat. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. I was just throwing colors out. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Mullick. I, I, I just might say that I guess um, I agree with the with going with the with the uh, the color of number one as well. And I guess it's because living in Belmont uh, with the dust and the sand and everything else, um, I, 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 our house is the color of sand now. It, it, that's what we did purposely so that when dust blew all over the place. It didn't matter, and that's the one thing that I that I did notice. And, and when you when you mentioned uh, uh, the uh, the idea of changing it, uh, Mayor Torgerson, uh, I I definitely thought that was a good plan. That's it for me. So we like D, like but D. in two different colors. But you like two different colors. <laughs> there we go. But that's 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 just fine. That's what <laughs> democracy's for. Um. So I am hearing. D. Uh, so let's start there. Uh, we can have a recommendation from this committee to the whole that we go with option D. Uh, just getting my back to my committee to the whole. Thank you. Uh, and the decision. So we are uh, we are recommending to council. Uh, number one, that we approve uh, design number D. That's number one. Uh, I guess number two, uh, we got to sort of hash out what the colors need to be. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> McLean? Okay. Not that important. So we're going with uh, longboard plank western cedar yeah. uh, for both the archway and the uh, supports. And uh, we'll need to recommend to council uh, that we approve staff to work within the five-year financial plan to incorporate the additional costs of the chosen sign with either taxation or grants, and that's going to be updated during the budget process. We're okay with that recommendation? Okay. And so, thank you. Thank you, Carson, very much. Uh, we're going to adjourn... Uh, the uh, Committee of the Whole, and I'm sure uh, our Director of Finance will be in touch shortly. Okay, uh, one following thing I just wanted to add is um, the pricing we supplier we provided uh, is pretty much a firm price. The only thing that would just need to be confirmed is engineering um, upon the selection of a design. That would be the next steps. Um, because until we receive engineering approval, we never know if they they might want to increase the supports in certain areas or add or remove certain sections just to get engineering approval. So um, 
once we do that, we can provide a certain price. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time Perfect. tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, I need to adjourn the Committee of the Whole. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, second by Councillor Mullock. Uh, any, all, all in favor? It is carried. And then I'll need to recall the regu regular meeting to order. Uh, moved by Councillor Pearson, second by Councillor Blanchett. All in favor? It's carried. And that uh, need a motion to forward, uh, to approve uh, the Committee of the Whole recommendations moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Blanchett of the uh, Design D uh, in uh, Longboard Plank Western Cedar and to have the finance team come back to us uh, with uh, during the budget process to see what that really looks like. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor McLean. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much. And uh, much thanks to Mrs. McNee and uh, the, uh, throughout the planning process. Thank you very much. And did I call all in favor? It's carried. Twice. Just because. Um, in your reading file, there is an additional uh, piece of correspondence from the uh, tourism demo, uh, but is there anything else within the reading file that folks would like to surface? Councillor McLean. Um, the Thompson Valley Highway 5 changes the bus. Um, I, I, I wondered about that, if we um, could bring that to the floor to sure. discuss that. So reading through... Um, if I got it right, I did read it all through earlier. It says that it goes to the Alberta border. But, so what <laughs> happens there when, when the bus gets to the Alberta border? No idea. So they, they must coordinate with, a, with an Alberta charter company. Yeah, because it, it would be a nice thing to have a daily bus going back and forth rather than the... Mm -hmm. So my, my recommendation there is with any sort of subsidized public transportation within the province, particularly here in the north. Uh, the province has contracted to NDIT to administer those subsidies, so I would recommend that we write a letter of support not to Thompson Valley Charters proper, but with the supporting the whole public transportation sector uh, and include Northern Development in that letter so that they are aware that this service is needed and that um, it needs to be subsidized if it's going to, to run daily. Yes. Will we have a mover on that? Moved by Councillor Mullock, seconded by Councillor McLean. Any discussion on that? All in favour? It's carried. Anything further, Councillor? No, oh, fine, thank you. How about others? Councillor Blanchett? So the reading, the um, via rail shelter... Um, maybe I'll make a motion to have um, tourism work with staff to see what they're thinking of here or okay. like do we have any more is this it for information that's well there's not really an ask in the letter no and it says can uh, let it would we we would like to inquire into how we can assist in having a shelter installed if they're bringing us the ask then they need to have some plans and some kind of idea of what they want and how much money they have to do it with and sort of some stuff, right? Well, it would be good to have, uh, well, I heard a motion there, so I'll ask for a seconder and I'll so speak wait, to it. Can I withdraw my um, motion? Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Well, I'd like to make a different one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, motions can be withdrawn at any time. Okay. So I just say I can withdraw it? Yeah. My, okay, I all withdraw right. withdraw my motion. Maybe we could ask for a delegation from them on what they had in mind. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, staff can reach out and present them with mm -hmm. uh, several ways that they can engage with staff and council, and one way would be a delegation. Yeah. We have a seconder? Councillor Pearson. On the motion and the shelter, uh, a lot of history here in terms of what 
not only this council has done, but previous councils before us um, in and around a piece of concrete that is not uh, on village property, but rather one that belongs to CN Rail. Um, so yeah, this, this will be a fun exercise. Mm -hmm. See what uh, tourism, tourism Belmont has in mind. Mm -hmm. Councillor Pearson. Well, you definitely touched on a couple of my points in that it is, I hate to say the word, but it's not our problem. Uh, it is via rail uh, platform. Uh, and this came to us a few years back and there was much discussion about building a shelter. Unfortunately, uh, due to the world we live in, a shelter would have to have clear sides so that there's no security issues for a single female waiting for a train for an interminable amount of time, uh, as we all know happens. And, you know, just to throw a point out, the original Via Rail shelter still exists and sits on the ground at the Golden Years Lodge. It would only take a flatbed truck and a crane to relocate that if that was Via's wish. But I think this has to be thrown back at Via's ballpark to, to deal with. But I welcome the discussion and see where tourism goes with it. Excellent. Uh, back to the motion. Didn't we, maybe last term, um, ask Via Rail to start um, offloading and onboarding um, clients at the hotel there? Passengers at the hotel, and is that not happening, or so that this was? I don't think the hotel's open. Okay. Well, then why did we send them down there? Well, it was open at the time. Okay. Okay. So now they're being let off at the regular spot across from the Swiss Bakery. They're well, they always were, there? but they were able to take shelter within oh, okay. um, the lobby at the uh, hotel. Okay. Back in. So and just. To that point, uh, I drove by the platform the other day and there was a couple standing there and they had a lot of luggage. Like it, it was like a house moving luggage pile. And this was about 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, this isn't really via rail time. So I checked and sure enough, the via rail wasn't expected until, this is eastbound to Jasper, until 12.30. So I wheeled around, checked with them. They had been up to date with the website. They were aware of the time. I'd offered a coffee, but they'd already been to Vail Coffee and back. Um, but still, I mean, it was supposed to be in town at seven in the morning, and it was 12.30 in the afternoon when it was expected to arrive, so. What was the temperature, right? It wasn't bad that day, but yeah, it's an ongoing problem, and I, I think, uh, yeah, see what we can come up with. I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Anything further on the reading file? Moving on to administrative reports, 8.1, uh, reversal of conflict of interest. You have a legal opinion before you, uh, reversing uh, my perceived conflict of interest in terms of um, business uh, involving VARDA. So no motion required, just there for information. Any Discussion on that, Councillor Pearson. One meeting and I want to be out of here early and I'm going to talk all night. So um, so to this point, I did just read um, of another community that is creating a budget line for councillors to have $5,000 a year in legal opinions for just this reason yeah. so that they can make that 29-minute call. Um, to a lawyer just to confirm their standings to avoid this in out on the recusal um, so it's just something maybe that we can consider it doesn't happen often but we all sit on a lot of a lot of boards and wear a lot of hats so yeah some are appointed and some are by your precious volunteer time <laughs> anything uh, further on that thank you councillor uh, 8.2 uh, looking at our memorandum of understanding between St. First Nation and the Village of Valmont, and we're looking to approve that this evening. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Mullock. Discussion? Exciting times. Looking forward, and, and uh, it's been a while uh, yeah. since uh, this uh, has been raised uh, initially, and I'm glad we're 
almost to that finish line. Next steps would be uh, co-signing in person and then uh, a more uh, ceremonial signing with uh, many dignitaries from around the province. So looking forward to that. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, 8.3 dog park proposal. There is a recommendation here, but I'm going to add some of my own language uh, for council's consideration. Uh, regarding the dog park uh, proposal at Johnny O Park, um, my recommendation to council is that the village does not proceed with the development of a dog park using the concept plan by Urban Systems and refer this back to staff for a design within the $50,000 budget allocated previously. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Blanchett. Discussion? Councillor Blanchett. So um, I was looking at the plans and um, it, I don't think we need to start off with something so grand. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a, we need fencing and a gate. Like, that's all we need. You know, when you're a dog owner, you go to the park with a dog toy, you throw stuff, you bring your own water, your bags, all your la-di-da. Um, and, if, and if the space is working for the dog walkers, then, or the dog owners, then, you know, maybe they can fundraise for m more pieces that they want or improve this section of fence or however it wants to look. But I think we can just start with a, just some fencing We've got fencing. I've heard it's not great. I don't know if there's holes in it. I don't know what we received from Trans Mountain or wherever we got it from. Is it is it doable for you know a few months just to start this stuff off? I don't know. Well, I, I, I do appreciate the Cadillac that Urban Systems put in front of us, mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, to your point, something a little more modest uh, mm -hmm. to start off with is yep. uh, I think doable. Councilor Pearson. Um, yeah, this is this has been quite interesting to watch, and and the uh, social media storm that was created. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sorry, but we don't need to spend that kind of money on a dog park. Uh, we have natural features in the ground already that we can fence around. Uh, a couple comments. I do agree that it there should be a, a two section, a large dog and a small dog. Um, you go pretty much any city and they that's how they're set up um, because not not everybody has a 20 pound ball of fury like I do uh, that maybe we want to keep separated from the larger dogs even though she will kick their butt but um, and as for location I would like to see it squared off um, basically with the proposed pump track line to take a little, give a little distance from the ballpark. So if we were to square that off, fence that area, two sections, alleviates those one or two people that can actually hit over that part of the fence. But I don't think, and that that could be a sitting area for people to watch ball games and are aware of the hazard they're putting themselves in. Well, that I would, think the bat presents the hazard. It's false for the dog. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> my two cents. Anything further? Councillor Mullick? Yeah, I g agree with all the comments. I think that was just a little bit overblown, the, uh, the, the, the concept. And, and, you know, really, we have nothing. Let's start with something and build, build on that. And then we can see exactly what, what's necessary, what's needed, and what opportunities there are mm -hmm. for, uh, for fundraising and for, for partnerships to, uh, to make this reality. Thanks very much. I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. Um, 8.4, pump track proposal. Uh, a couple of recommendations here. Uh, number one, uh, that, the, uh, that we dedicate uh, three acres of land to the southeast corner. John Asajak Park, lo located at 101. Dogwick Street, legally described as Block A, District Lot 7355, Caribou District, except Plan PGP uh, 42857 and Plan PGP 48091, be approved in principle to the Vale Mountain Area Development uh, Recreation Development Association for the use of a pump track. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Mullock. Discussion? Councillor Pearson. 
Uh, quick comment. Um, 100% support the pump track and everything it's being done. Uh, I did have two residents approach me with concerns that uh, Varda just borrowed money to buy a large chunk of property and now they're asking for us to give them property. So that's kind of what I've heard from two, two members of the community. Um, other than that, I mean, I support the, the proposal. I would, my, my response to that would be that um, given the location of the property uh, and the limitations noted in our official community plan, um, a pump track might not be supported by engineering, Department of Fisheries and Oceans, et cetera, et cetera, being in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. That's my only response there. And it's just so much more central over at Johnny O. Any further discussion on the first resolution? All in favor? It's carried. And number two, uh, that the request for the village staff to take on the pump track as NASA uh, be uh, referred right back to them for budgetary implications. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Blanchette. Uh, discussion on that, Councillor Pearson. <laughs> um, again, yeah, I mean, I would like to see this go back to, to staff. Um, the word always says that the uh, piece of property is gifted back to the to the village. It's no gift. This is a long-standing commitment and expense. Um, and I would much prefer that this remained the property of Varda, uh, much like the bike park. Nobody else maintains the bike park. Uh, if I feel this is how this should be operated. Uh, the expense to the to the village to run this for the next 20 years as far as a hard surface, paved surface, and other infrastructure, it'd be pretty prohibitive. I think you'll find when it comes back f from staff back to council that the cost will be pretty minimal. There'll be some, if, if, if there is some grass, it's going to be mowed maybe 15, 10, 15 years from now. Uh, a substance has to be put onto the asphalt, but once that substrate is compacted and asphalt put down, uh, and if it's done right, and it's done by uh, my understanding, Bello Solutions is a globally renowned designer and builder. Um, and if you don't have the heaves that we do have with sand, and it meets the proctor, you'll find it's pretty minimal, I think. Who had their hand out first? I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor Blanchett. Um, insurance. So we own the property. People are zooming around on their bikes. I would like to have something come back about our insurance. Yeah. Okay. We own America Round. Just saying. Yeah, that was going to be one of one of my points is the <laughs> the insurance part of it, and also yeah, I have a little bit of background in uh, uh, the development of pump tracks and 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 uh, yeah, I think that typically when they're when they're constructing these things. The current uh, method is to try and make them as maintenance friendly as possible, you know. And I think you are going to see very limited uh, um, uh, dollars needing to be spent on it um, over the course of time, you know, depending on whether they have fencing to and you know things like that. Um, but it's but it is actually quite minimal once once everything's done. It's just they're very expensive to build. The, uh, the one thing that will kill uh, a substrate is standing water. And we're lucky that we live in a fairly sandy environment, but even the concept, uh, the design concept sh uh, shows eight. eight French drains. You know, so even if the, if the sand doesn't get her, uh, the big drain rock will. Anything further? I'm looking forward to uh, uh, staff's uh, taking them back to staff and having them uh, figure it out. Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, I didn't see any new business identified tonight. Does anybody have a notice of motion to bring forward? Nothing from Dominica or, you know, the Republic? 
no. Caribbean side or Atlantic if side? If I find a piece of property, I will zoom into the next meeting and let you know. Okay, thank you very much. How's that blue feeling? <laughs> uh, council reports. Um, who's ready? Oh, I bet you Councillor McLean is. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready with my one-liner, although it was a four-day undertaking. Um, last week, I traveled to Nelson, B.C. to attend in-person meetings of the Columbia River Treaty Local Governments Committee. Uh, the meetings took place on February 22nd, 23rd, and I traveled back on the 24th. Um, these meetings are all in camera, and there is nothing to report out. Um, I won't ask the question then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Person. Uh, pretty quiet week. Uh, February 20th had a uh, meeting of the uh, Belmont Community Forest. Uh, February 23rd had a budget, budget presentation with uh, Director of Finance McNee, and I thank her for doing that uh, a little earlier than everyone else, as I won't be in town. And earlier today, I sat in on a community collaborative um, health table meeting, so. Thank you. Councillor Mullock. On February 20th, uh, there was a tourism meeting which I was unable to attend due to a prior commitment. On February 22nd, I attended the CBT Ready Grant Adjudication Committee meeting. Uh, there we received our binder with all the, uh, the excellent submissions and uh, commenced our evaluations. And just of note, uh, you can actually see the, uh, the submissions I think became online today uh, that you can access through the Village website. And if all goes well, I believe as of tomorrow until March 6th, uh, the online uh, it's available to, uh, to, uh, to make your online uh, reports on who you want to, uh, to go ahead for the public. Um, and of course, yeah, the key dates, you know, next Sunday, if, you know, there is the online uh, uh, portal that you can use, but uh, I, I hope that people can show up at the high school to support and, and, and to actually uh, chat with everyone uh, in person to, uh, to see what, what uh, Good results they're hoping to uh, to get from from this money. That's it for me. Thank you, Councillor Blanchet. Um, so today we had, like Councillor Pearson said, we had the community collaborative, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of the program. Um, we were trying to decide, but um, at, the, at the second when the when the resident has two years left to, to, of training, there's a new program for rural communities. And on March 19th, McBride and Valmont have um, put their hand up for this um, thing. And th somebody will be deciding whether or not they want to come here or McBride or another rural community. And then you have that resident for two years. They stay here. They live here. They become part of the community. And then thus hoping that they stay here. So that was the gist of our excitement today um, at the possibility of maybe perhaps getting a two-year resident left and coming here and loving the life here. Very cool. So yes, so heads up for March 19th. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Um, Councillor uh, McLean also on March 15th had a meeting with myself and BC Hydro. Uh, regarding uh, Kenbasket Reservoir, low water levels, uh, no, a low snowpack, and the more frequent and um, higher um, rate of dust storms coming off of the reservoir. Uh, we'll continue to work with the province and BC Hydro to identify uh, and mitigate um, those because they're not going to get any less frequent given the uh, current climate. Uh, March 16th uh, with VARDA and the Project Pump It Up Committee, uh, we had a design meeting with Vela Solutions. Uh, the 20th uh, had a Southeast BC Regional Connectivity Committee meeting. Uh, our current MOU uh, with that committee has expired and so there will be a letter coming from that committee uh, to uh, reinvigorate our membership um, soon. Um, 
I was supposed to have on the 21st a local government engagement with Minister Cullen regarding the proposed Land Act amendments, uh, but since uh, the rollout has been suspended, uh, that meeting was not, um, that meeting was cancelled. Um, suspended, I suspect it'll be uh, resurfacing post election. Um, the 20, uh, continuing on the 21st and right through to the end of the 22nd, um, Regional District Phase 4 George, Committee of the Whole for the Subregional Budget, and then on the 22nd, Environment and Parks Committee, Regional Hospital Board. Uh, we had a closed board session this month, uh, continued with the open board, and then a continuation of the previous days, Committee of the Whole. Uh, 26, I had a discussion with Chief uh, Lampro regarding the un un unallocated budget uh, that was announced uh, during the budget considerations for the provinci provincial government. Uh, 12, 12 billion? 12 billion unallocated. So not earmarked for anything. Uh, coming up with ways to support the North Thompson and Robson Valleys as um, Previous announcements have sort of left us in the, in the shadows there. And then today, I had the uh, extreme privilege to uh, be involved in a podcast with cross-border interviews. Uh, Chris Brown, who is a municipal uh, reporter. Um, yeah, a great sort of 50-minute discussion on local government and passions. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, that's my report. Oh, uh, one more story to add. Um, we are losing Constable Hunter. He's on the move to Quinell, so I wish uh, him and his family all the best. And his replacement will be here by April 5th. So one member down with the RCMP, um, but quickly replaced. Quickly, as in RCMP time, a month is pretty good. Uh, nothing to receive, so thank you very much. I'll ask uh, to, uh, for public comment. Are there any public comments under 14.1 on items considered by council as part of the approved agenda? Mr. Kelly. If you could just, oh, I got it. I have a short preamble. Sorry, it's been a while since we've had a public comment. Uh, so this is both for us and for the public comments. Comments and questions will only be regarding on an item. Um, on the current agenda and please from the podium for, so the folks at home can uh, hear your comments. Uh, they must, uh, you must put forth, must be on topics that are not normally dealt with with uh, village staff as a matter of routine. Uh, they shall be addressed through myself and answered likewise. Debates with or by individual members of council are not allowed during this time. No commitments shall be made. Uh, and any matters which may require action uh, shall be tabled to a future meeting of this council. Uh, bylaws, temporary use permits, etc., that have been uh, considered at a public hearing but have not yet received final approval should not be raised at this time. And uh, individuals must state their name and just simply your area of residence, whether it's in the village or the regional district. We don't need your personal address. And uh, you'll have two minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Kelly. Thanks, Mayor Torgerson, councillors and staff. Uh, first, I just wanted to really say thank you very much for um, deciding on supporting the allocation of lands at uh, Johnny Hill Park for the uh, pump track project. Um, we've been working really hard uh, as a committee to reach out and fill as many gaps in information as we can. Pump tracks are relatively new. And to Mayor Torgerson's earlier comments about those substrates and the, the surface, um, everything that's come back so far from the communities we've re reached out to is that the actual maintenance of the surface itself has been uh, almost nothing. Uh, visiting, Having visited some of the earliest built pump tracks um, this past summer, uh, those pump tracks dating back to about uh, installation dates of 2017 so they're about six years old but showing literally no signs of wear and looking like I thought they had just been recently put in um, and so they they do hold up very well again if the the, the construction standards are very high in which Bellow Solutions uses uh, our drainage is excellent and we're really fortunate on that front and uh, yeah, just really excited to continue um, providing information. So please, if there are questions, I'm really happy to 
go out and find those answers. And uh, again, it's been great working with staff to, to yeah, fill in all the gaps and answer all the questions. So um, just, yeah, looking for any uh, questions <laughs> or specifics that people are looking for. We're, 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 again, trying really hard to answer those questions to satisfy all the requirements. And I'm sure staff will be in touch. Okay, super. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Everybody. Kelly. Further public comment? Motion to receive, moved by Councillor McLean, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Uh, discussion on public comment? All in favor? It's carried. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Pearson. Thank you.